Hello, I'm Vincent. And I'm Andrew. And today we were given a, a challenge with just an hour before filming. We asked somebody to pick a country and we both scurried around to try and find something to talk about from that area of the world. And uh, it, today it was Canada. And unfortunately I've already glanced across all Auntie Scott. It's got me beat in my opinion. But I'm going to show you a lovely album page of uh, one of Canada's most iconic issues, which is the 1859 cents issue. So I'll pop that under the camera. And there you can see is one page of perforated stamps with cents values. These issue, these designs uh, first came about uh, in imperforate format with pence instead of cents. We've got here a page of the cents issues issued in 1859 and collectors generally are after a couple of features. They're after the different shades, which you can see, I'm sure, uh, a quick glance, there's quite a range of shades. Just look at that stamp and that stamp, same design and also whether they're lightly cancelled and reasonably well centred. These stamps do not, as a rule, come anywhere close to being well centred. But this rather pretty page, I'm going to zoom in and just show you a couple of stamps that are reasonably well centred for this issue. There we go, the young Queen Victoria, I think she was 17 when this particular portrait was rendered and Jacques Cartier and uh, both uh, obviously significant historical figures um, I shall just move the page down and you can see at the top here here we have the stamps with a beaver design how uh, you can't underestimate the um, the importance of the uh, a beaver uh, a pelt trade. Um, the whole of the rights to the Hudson's Bay area was given on the basis of a suit of clothes made out of uh, beaver fur um, uh, given to the, uh, the English king. Uh, really, really something. A very expensive uh, uh, product which uh, was generally associated with the hat trade um, so that's given uh, pride of place and then of course uh, the queen the, the prince consort there queen victoria's husband and so on i'll just put an imperforate example showing pence alongside so there we go, I think first issued in, is it 51 or 53? I forget the imperforates. And there you can see imperforate with the word pence against later to be replaced with sense. So there we go, one of my favorite Canadian issues. So Andy, go for it. I know what you've got. Okay. So um, just across the water, which is of course part of Canada now, Newfoundland famed for all their pioneering transatlantic airmail covers during the, the late 1900s and early 1920s. Now, probably one of the rarest one is known as the Martin side. And here we have a genuine cover sent on the plane. Now, we'll just put that under the glass and we'll have a little bit of information about it for you. It's addressed to England and sent from St John's Newfoundland there. It's endorsed at the top there with the names of the pilots and the plane. Now the stamp is the three cent caribou stamp and it's got a manuscript aerial post on there. Now what's very unusual about this, it is a, effectively an airmail, but it isn't because the, the flight that took off, it only went 50 yards and crashed. And the, the pilot who organized it all, when he could be bothered, he eventually sailed to England with the mail and it arrived something like five months later than when the actual <laughs> air mail was supposed to get there. I've had flights that felt 
that yeah, long, yeah. but haven't been quite that long. Um, but as a result, there's very few known in existence. Yeah. And it's listed in the, the Gibbons catalogue as the stamp, but to get it on cover is an incredible rarity. Yeah. And um, it comes with a full Peter Holcomb certificate. And uh, yeah, we're delighted to have it. Isn't, isn't that a wonderful thing? Yeah. It's, it, yeah, there are all sorts of great overprints, uh, but that that's the... That's very unusual being a manuscript overprint mm. and that's been accepted. Yeah, it's uh, it's initialed by the uh, the postmaster, uh, J.A. Robinson, uh, who's the postmaster general. Now, am I correct that uh, that Martin Sy was the name of the company that built the... Mm. Yes. Yes. I'm uh, not sure whether it was a monoplane or a biplane, but yes, it was certainly the yeah. manufacturer. And I, I guess uh, that... that uh, Probably finished off their uh, uh, plane building career because we've not yeah. heard of them. After. <laughs> anyway, that's that, a good start. But of fun, course, um, you know, after that thing. time, there were you know lots and lots of other wow. flights from Newfoundland, and you know, they produced lots of nice covers and very collectible. Wow, wow. So, uh, I think you can say happy. Yeah, you you win on that. <laughs> but anyway, your your comments below. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye.